In this problem, we're told a projectile is shot from the edge of a cliff 115 meters above ground level with an initial speed of 65 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees with the horizontal. And so for A, we're told to determine the time taken by the projectile to hit point P at the ground level. B says to determine the distance X of point P from the base of the vertical cliff. And at the instant just before the projectile hits point P, find C, the horizontal and vertical components of its velocity. D is going to be the magnitude of the velocity, and E, the angle made by the velocity vector with the horizontal, and F is the maximum height above the cliff, uh, cliff top reached by the projectile. So there's many parts of this problem. It's going to take a while, but let's just go ahead and start. So I always start these problems with the given. So we have the given in the x direction and the y direction. So make sure you start with that. So what do we know in the x direction? So we always assume acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. Uh, be, unless they specify differently, but usually they don't. And then we also know uh, in the y direction, acceleration is the force of gravity, which is just going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And so what we also know, or what we don't know, x, the change in x, right? So this distance right here, we don't know. So delta x, I'm going to set equal to question mark because we don't know yet. Delta y, though, our change in our y position, we do know. Right, so we start at 150 meters, we go to zero, so the change is going to be 0 minus 115, which is minus 115. So your change in y is 115 meters. And then v sub 0 of x, so our initial velocity in the x direction, we don't know yet, but we can solve. So I'm going to move it over here real quick, v sub 0 x. And then we also don't know it in the y, but we can solve for it. So we'll do that in a second, but uh, we also need to find or v sub x, the final velocity, we don't know. Same with the y direction, we don't know. And then we also don't know time. So t equals question mark, t equals question mark. So make sure to write this down along with me because I'm going to have to erase multiple times throughout this problem. So just keep that in mind. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, find the velocity in the x direction or the horizontal and in the y direction. So if we set this up, this triangle like this, right? So here's our triangle. We're going to have to use vectors for this. So we're traveling 65 meters per second, uh, and it's 35 degrees. And so in order to find, I'm going to label this x and y, right? So the initial velocity in the x direction, initial velocity in the y direction, what we're going to want to do is use sine and cosine. So you should know that the cosine of an angle, 35 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side, right? So SOKOTOA, so the adjacent side, which is x over 65. So if you want to solve for x, just multiply both sides by 65. So x is equal to 65 times the cosine of 35. If you go ahead and do that, you'll get 53.24 meters per second. So that right here is going to be your horizontal uh, velocity or initial velocity. So 53.24 meters per second. And then in the y direction, you're going to use sine. So the sine of an angle. So sine of 35 equals the opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is y. Hypotenuse is 65. So if we multiply both sides by 65, you'll get that y equals 65 times the sine of 35. If you go ahead and do this, you'll get 37.28 meters per second. So that's going to be in the y direction. And so now we've got all that. Uh, what we're going to want to do is move on to a because now we can actually solve for a. So this is 37.28 meters per second. So we've got that. And now if you look uh, what a is, a is determine the time taken by the projectile to hit point P, uh, the ground level. So essentially, we're just trying to find how long it takes to hit the ground. And so we can do that because we have uh, everything or everything we need to solve for that. So essentially, what we need to do is solve for uh, t. And so the equation that you mainly use for these is delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve for t, right? Because we're solving for time. And so we have every variable in the y direction to do this. So we're just going to plug in what we've got. So y or delta y is minus 115 equals v sub 0 in the y direction. So 37.28 times t plus 1 half times a. And so a in the y direction we know is just gravity. 
So minus 9.8 times t squared. So if you go ahead and simplify this a bit, minus 115 equals 37.28 t, and then 1 half times minus 9.8 is minus 4.9 t squared. And so I'm going to add 115 to both sides, and then we can get it in quadratic form. So if you go ahead and add it to this side, uh, you're going to get minus 4.9 t squared plus 37.28 t plus 115. So this right here is in quadratic, and you can plug this in your calculator, and you'll get, if you graph this, and you just use the zero function, you can find where it crosses the x-axis, and that essentially is going to be the time it took for it to reach the round. One should be negative, I'm pretty sure, so uh, the only value is your positive. If you go ahead and do that, uh, you should get 9.96 seconds. So this right here is going to be your answer to A. It's going to take 9.96 seconds for it to reach the round. So that's your answer to A. So let's move on to B. So B says, determine the distance uh, x of the point P from the base of the vertical cliff. So we're trying to find the change in x, uh, this distance right here. And we're going to use the same exact formula, except for uh, we're going to plug in time, right? Because the time is the same for it to reach in the y direction and the x direction. And we're going to go ahead and solve uh, for delta x. So it's going to be the same formula. Delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. It's going to be a bit easier though. So delta x is what we're solving for. Equals v sub 0 in the x direction. 53.24 times uh, the time it took, right? So time is 9.96. And then notice how if we do plus 1 half times acceleration, acceleration is 0. So if we plug in 0 times whatever time is, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just going to become zero. So essentially, it just cancels out. So it's really just 53.24 times 9.96. So if you go ahead and do this, you'll get delta x equals uh, 530.27. And this is going to be in meters, right? So it's just the change in position. So 530, uh, you can round, right? So 530 meters. So right here is going to be your answer to B. And let's go ahead and move on to C. So I'm going to erase what we have on screen here. Uh, write it down if you need, but we're going to be moving on. So C says the horizontal and vertical components of its velocity. So the way we're going to go about doing this is by solving uh, this equation. V equals V sub 0 plus A times T. And so what we need to do is solve for it in each direction, right? We're trying to solve for V, and we're going to plug in right so imagine x direction y direction right because we're solving for the components so what we can do is just plug in the final vo or the initial velocity in the x and then the other one we're going to plug it in for the y so hopefully you wrote it down v sub zero in the x direction is going to be 53.24 and then keep in mind a in the x direction is just zero right zero meters per second if you're traveling in the x direction uh, so it's really just plus zero so essentially it's the same exact thing it's just 53.24 meters per second. The y direction, though, is a bit more difficult. So v, or v sub 0 in the y direction is 37.28, and then plus a, which in the y direction is minus 9.8. So it's just minus 9.8. And then the time it took to reach the bottom was 9.96 seconds. So uh, hopefully you wrote that down. But uh, essentially, if you go ahead and solve this, uh, v sub y, right, is going to be equal to minus 60.328, and then it's velocity, right, so meters per second. Uh, this one is v sub x, right? So those right here, this is going to be your x, or the horizontal vertical, the horizontal component, and this right here is the vertical. So that's c done. Uh, d is going to be the magnitude of this velocity. So if you draw this like a triangle, and imagine vectors, right, so the change in y, if it's not like this, it's down. It's like that. And so, right, we go 53.24 meters per second this way. And then this way is minus 60.328 meters per second. And we're trying to find the magnitude. So essentially this right here, right, this is the magnitude. These are the components. I'm going to call this C. So we're trying to solve for C. And so C, if you know Pythagorean theorem, C squared squared, 
plus a squared or c squared equals a squared plus b squared imagine this is a this is b if we want to solve for c just square root both sides so a squared plus b squared and so we can just plug in so a just imagine is 53.24 b is minus 60.328 so c equals the square root of 53.24 squared plus minus 60.328 squared we go ahead and do this c is going to be equal to 80.46 uh, and i'm going to round to the tenths place so 80.5 and then keep in mind these are in meters per second so it's going to be meters per second so the magnitude of the velocity is going to be 80.5 meters per second now we need to find e the angle made by the velocity vector uh, with the horizontal so the way we do this is by taking the arc tangent so arc tangent of y over x so you're changing y over you're changing x so essentially it's just going to be our y which is minus 60.328 over 53.24 and so this right here is going to give you your angle right so angle it's going to be equal to minus 48.57 i believe and what they want you to do is round up so i'm going to round to uh the tenths place so it's going to be equal to minus 48.6 and this is going to be below the horizontal right because it's negative so below the horizontal so that's going to be e now let's move on to f so f is going to be to find the maximum height above the cliff top reached by the projectile so i'm going to race once again write this down if you need it so i'm going to be erasing and so in order to solve this whenever you try and find the maximum height you're going to use basically your y direction but what you want to do is set your final velocity equal to zero because at this point at some point right its highest point its velocity is going to be equal to zero so this is going to be f right so we know the equation v squared equals v sub zero and this is in the y direction right so v sub zero of y so the initial velocity in the y direction squared plus 2a times delta y so we're going to use this equation because we have every variable and we can solve for uh, the change in y, which is going to be the maximum height. So let's just plug everything in. So remember, v right here, it's going to be 0. So 0 squared is just 0 equals v sub y, or v sub 0 of y. If you remember, it's 37.28. And then we're squaring it, plus 2. And then a is just the force of gravity in the y direction, so minus 9.8. And so times delta y, because that's what we're solving for. So if you go ahead and move this to the other side, minus 37.28 squared, it's going to become minus 37.28 squared is equal to 2 times minus 9.8, which is minus 19.6 times delta y. And if we want to solve for delta y, just minus 19.6 from both sides. Delta y is going to be equal to minus 37.28 squared over minus 19.6 if you go ahead and do this uh, you should get 70.908 keep in mind it's change in y right so here it's a distance so it's going to be in meters uh, i'm going to go ahead and round to just 70.9 meters so this right here is going to be the maximum height above the cliff top reached by the projectile and so yeah that's going to be your answers to this problem and hopefully you found this video useful